Hello, Berkeley. Hello, Boston. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, health and medicine is a huge priority for the Obama administration. So we are excited to support this effort. And I'm going to tell you about a few initiatives, but I think this is our first ever Lyme Innovation Hackathon. How amazing is that? We have Massachusetts all the way cross country to Berkeley, world-class scientists, clinicians, patients, family members of patients, everyone here together, uniting, bringing their own unique experience, their own unique perspective, your, your very much unique role, whether you're in sick in bed watching us from abroad, or we're here physically in the room today, everyone in this has a part to play. That's why these hackathons are so magical, is that they pretty much are connecting new perspectives, new approaches that have not been done before, and this is awesome. Um, so here today in Boston, we are building momentum for an upcoming event. This is not gonna be a one day flash in the pan. And we are here because uh, the solutions, the ideas are going to come from unexpected places. A critical element of this innovation ecosystem that we're all building is bringing fresh eyes to a challenge, bringing fresh eyes and new perspective to a problem. That may come from students here at MIT or Harvard or a community college. It could be Berkeley or a little Stanford rivalry across the coast. Um, we don't know where it's going to come. So one thing with Ebola, when Ebola was, was raging in West Africa, people united the best scientists in the world while trying to contain this. The problem, one of the problems they faced is that the suits were horribly hot, horribly uncomfortable, so people wouldn't wear them. And you're not keeping doctors safe, so how do you solve this problem? Honestly, the government didn't know, so they created a challenge, a grand prize challenge for innovation to ask the world, how do we solve this problem with, with suits and have better protective gear? And you know who won the Ebola grand prize challenge? Was a wedding dress maker. How cool is that? Someone who puts on styles and clothes and wedding dress, trying to not get makeup on these expensive gowns, ended up winning the Ebola grand challenge. So where is the Lyme solution gonna come from this? This is just the beginning and I'm excited to find out. Another thing that I want to really emphasize that we talk about at the White House at innovation is exaptation. It's probably my favorite word of all of them. It's A E X A P T A T I O N. Exaptation. It comes from evolutionary biology and it means a trait that evolved because it brought a population more fitness than without it. And it evolved for one purpose. But then the exaptation is it had another benefit for something else. So because it brought fitness in a totally different arena, it swept through the population and had even a bigger advantage. So it originated for one purpose, but then it found a second purpose in a completely unrelated way that brought greater fitness to a population ever imagined. The business literature found out about this. It's originally from evolutionary biology, and they exacted this concept for innovation to describe disruptive innovation, because the best ideas are often not new inventions. They're old ideas or things that already exist in one field, and then they're applied to a new field. So how can we do that in Lyme? Are there things from oncology and cancer that are already further ahead? Translational medicine, applying that to infectious disease. There's so many ideas that probably already are out there. So that's what I'm excited here today, is that intersection of all these disciplines for exaptation. I also love the quote, uh, and this comes from our November event that we did uh, with Innovations X, building together all these communities, many of us reunited again here, um, from Albert Einstein. And it basically is, we cannot solve our problems with the, using the same thinking when we uh, created them. Let me say that again, because I messed it up, but we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. And so we need your fresh minds, we need everyone, we need the patients who have been sick in the beds and feel like medicine is not serving them today because there's new hope. With the Obama administration last year at a State of the Union in January 2015, he announced a precision medicine initiative. This is over $200 million to revolutionize how we improve health and treat disease. We basically want to customize this to every individual. Each one of us here, each one of us in the world is unique. We do this with blood transfusions. You go in, and what, what type of blood do you have? You don't get any kind of blood. You have to have it matched. We should be doing the same thing for every type of disease. What are your genes? What's your, your unique environmental context? What strain of Lyme disease do you have? What are your co-infections? Your treatment solution is going to be unique, as unique as you are, and medicine is not yet there, but precision medicine is huge hope to make that happen. So that's what we see here, is precision medicine fueling 
um, better treatment, better health care for all diseases, from cancer, the cancer moonshot, to Lyme disease, to all the co-infections, you name it. The, the, some of the other fuel that we're going to use to move this forward is open data. This, this whole initiative to unlock data. If taxpayers have paid for science and research, you should have free and easy access to that information that you help create. So part of the portfolio I work on is called the Open Data Initiative. We have a website, data.gov, with over 200,000 federal data sets available free, hopefully easily searchable and discoverable for you across all fields. What can we do in the Lyme disease and the co-infection and the medicine space to make more of those accessible, unlock them? So they're not buried in bureaucracy. They're not locked behind academic institutions. But any data scientist, any mathematician or statistician, or any curious citizen or maker can go out there, find new patterns, find new insights that, that otherwise won't happen. So that opening data, that spirit of openness, open science, and sharing the information collaboration will really help accelerate, uh, accelerate where we go. The last piece of the administration that this, this event really ties into is called the My Data Initiative. And My Data is connecting you as an American with your own personal information. So you should be able to log on in one simple place and get all your health records, no matter what 50 states you live in. Uh, should be interoperable, easy transferable, so that's the health example. We call that blue button. So you have to have standardized data collection across all the many vendors, all the different hospitals, all the different states. And then from your perspective, log on in one place, download your medical records with a click of one button. It should be as simple as that. And that's why we call it blue button health IT interoperability. So <clears throat> long term, with this data interoperability, and every American, their records collect a similar way, that will, over time, create masses of data. Masses of data that we can analyze, find new patterns on, and hopefully we will sooner than later. So with that, with the Open Data Initiative, My Data Initiative, and Precision Medicine, um, we're kind of uniting them all and applying that to Lyme disease, new science solutions, where everyone, everyone is, is equally, um, like, has to, equally valuable, has tons to contribute, and one of the nice things about this open data, open science, is it's truly democratizing. You are going to have the same access to information as the elite professors at some of the world's best institutions. So um, thank you all for convening this. Thank you, Nev, and everyone. Thank you for having the White House be a part. We look forward to continuing the momentum and helping lift however we can. Health is a huge priority for President Obama and the Office of Science and Technology Policy. That is not going away. Between now and the end of the administration, we have our foot down on the gas pedal full throttle. And if anything, we're going to turn it up because there's too much important stuff to solve uh, to, to back off. So this is just the beginning, and we look forward to being a part. There's one last thing I want to do. I love to know who's in the audience. So if you're from an academic institution, raise your hand now. And keep your hands up. Now, if you're a student at one of these academic institutions, put your hands up and keep the hands up because we want to keep everyone together. OK. And if this is your first ever hackathon, put your hand up. Oh, that's awesome. A lot of new hackathon people. Um, and then, let's see, industry. If you're from private industry, who's here? And then nonprofits? Any nonprofits, foundations? Cool. Any groups I'm missing? That's, so academic, industry, nonprofit, students, uh, and newbies. And I can tell you family and friends are in the audience and hopefully online as well. This is the beginning and that crossover. Let's see where the exaptation uh, takes us. And I can't wait to hear the pitches and how we're going to solve Lyme.